Best Times at Ridgemont High, first requested me by Jay Gaja and directed by Amy Heckerling, is a 1982 coming-of-age comedy film that takes place at, you guessed it, Ridgemont High. The film follows a handful of high school teenagers that are attempting to hook up, have fun, and pass their classes. As we watch each of these high school teens attempt to accomplish these three goals of theirs, we watch them encounter a number of relatable obstacles as well. Ridgemont High is fast, but it's also complex as well. All right, so I didn't really know anything about Fast Times at Ridgemont High. I didn't even know it existed, to be honest, and I'm sure a lot of you will find that interesting or funny, but do with that information as you will. Regardless, I did do a little pre-watch research because per usual, I just want to know kind of what I'm getting myself into. And I saw that Sean Penn seems to show up on most of the promotional material, including the posters. And there's definitely a reason for that, which I will get into. But for now, I'll just say that I liked Fast Times at Ridgemont High a lot. I don't think it's in the top five coming of age films of all time or anything, but it's clearly one of the more influential ones. Part of what Fast Times nails is the high school experience, which is like the main thing they're going for here. The characters speak and act like high school kids, they face high school problems, they're often reckless like high school kids can be, and the atmosphere is pretty spot on even for a film that takes place in the 80s. Coming of age films also have a difficult balance to strike. Go too far in the gritty realism direction and the story may not feel like it's all that new or interesting. Go too far in the entertainment direction and nothing feels genuine and real. Fast Times does strike a nice balance because it feels like a fun adventure, but it also feels at least semi-realistic at the same time. This is definitely one of the more properly aligned coming of age films I've probably ever seen. A big reason the more realistic story beats work is because they do in fact feel realistic. The way a lot of the characters are overly concerned with what their peers think about them, how they're focused on hooking up with the prettiest girl or the most handsome guy in the school, and as I mentioned, how they're often reckless because they just don't really know any better. These are things that I think most of us could probably relate to. These are behaviors and tendencies that most of us probably remember taking part in ourselves. Good coming of age films do that. They bring you back to a time when you were going through something similar. And that's one of the biggest appeals of the genre. What Fast Times also does really well is the juggling of multiple tones. This movie's funny. It has a lot of moments that made me chuckle because they're just cleverly written and perform ridiculousness in a high school setting. But what the film also does well is drama. There are definitely points where things get more serious and they focus more on serious obstacles that teenagers might possibly face during their formative years, like these characters do. These moments don't feel disingenuous. They don't feel manufactured. They feel like actual problems that actual teenagers are facing, and that's where the balance I mentioned really comes into play here. Having too much realism in the movie may not be entertaining as a whole. Have too little, and it may feel disingenuous. This is a movie that balances itself very effectively. That said, there's one problem I have with it, and it's the pacing. Sometimes it feels like the film knows which direction it wants the story to go, but not where it wants it to end up. You can occasionally feel a little aimless as you jump around from character to character, and it can ultimately feel like a compiled collection of scenes that don't connect to tell a cohesive story. Pacing-wise, there's also times where the film probably needs to amp things up a little bit more, particularly in the final act, and it just doesn't and instead goes another direction. There's just some moments that don't feel as big as they should, and that's in part because the buildup isn't always quite there. But on a more positive note, this is one of the better actor requests I've had from an entire cast standpoint. Unsurprisingly, Sean Penn kind of steals the show here. He plays a stoner surfer named Jeff Spicoli, who just brings a lot of energy to this film. He's very comedic, he's very entertaining, and he's just a hell of a lot of fun. It's funny to see Sean Penn in a role like this because in hindsight, this is not the kind of role we're accustomed to seeing him in. It's funny that this is considered to be his breakout role because it's just so unlike the rest of his body of work. Everyone in this movie is good though. It would take forever if I ran through every single actor's performance, so for time's sake, I'll just name a couple standouts above the rest. Jennifer Jason Lee plays a high school teenager named Stacy, and she was probably my second favorite character in this movie. There's a teacher named Mr. Han, played by Ray Walston, a real Mr. Feeny type who was also great, and a more edgy character named Mike, played by Robert Romanus, who was also very, very good. This is truly an ensemble cast, and everyone pulls their weight here. You don't see many ensemble casts coming of age films that work as well as this one does, and that is pretty great. The soundtrack is also really good. I was consistently thinking to myself that the high school atmosphere is always there. It felt like I was at Ridgemont High watching these kids through their struggles. And a big reason it feels that way is because of the music. It sets the tone. It helps establish the setting by delivering a musical sound that just feels like we're in a high school environment, which we are. So the music actually plays a pretty decent sized role here, and it does a great job playing its part. Narratively speaking, one of the major running themes of Fast Times at Ridgemont High is sex. Considering Fast Times is right there in the title, this isn't incredibly surprising, but nonetheless, it felt like an honest portrayal of high school life. What these teens are going through causes them to behave in certain ways, either due to peer pressure or other influences that, in a way, dictates their behavior. The film intelligently discusses the role of sex in a young teen's life, 
and the impact and risk of such behaviors that most young kids don't ever realize. In this area, I felt Fast Times at Ridgemont High was very smart, and that's definitely one of the cooler aspects of this film. But as we wrap up, let's take a look at the pros cons list. For the pros, I thought Fast Times at Ridgemont High delivered a well-balanced and well-written coming of age story, great performances from an ensemble cast, a very strong high school soundtrack, and quality comedy. As for the cons, I just felt sometimes the pacing wasn't quite top notch and the direction wasn't always clear. Regardless, I'm gonna give Fast Times at Ridgemont High a nine out of 10 and definitely recommend you check it out if you enjoy the coming of age genre. This is a great and very influential coming of age film. So have you guys seen Fast Times at Ridgemont High before? What did you think of it? And if not, let me know why not. And also let me know your favorite coming of age film. For me, it's probably still The Edge of 17. I really do love that movie, probably more than most. Either way, this is Will Foxification signing off. See you in the next video.